close your eyes, and divide your thoughts into two sorts. Those that want to stay with the breath right now and those that don't. The ones that don't want to stay with the breath, you can just put them out to pasture. Focus on the ones that do want to stay here. And then notice when you breathe in, where do you feel it? It's good to start with some good long, deep in and out breaths. And then find a rhythm that feels right. And keep watch over the mind again to make sure it does stay with the breath. As you come to a place like this where it's quiet, you find some physical seclusion. But what we really need is mental seclusion. In other words, the mind's ability to step out from its thoughts and not be pestered by its thoughts. And that's a skill you can take with you anywhere. You can't take the monastery with you when you go, but you can take this skill. So focus on it. Any thoughts that don't fall in line with your original intention to stay with the breath, you can let them go, let them go. If you find yourself falling into them, pull yourself out. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to see the thought to its end. You don't have to finish it up. And when a new thought comes, you don't have to peek inside to see what it's about. Just assume for the time being that anything that's not related to the breath is not important. Because otherwise you open the door for these things to come in. And it's like the story of the camel in the tent. There's a sandstorm outside. And the camel comes and says, please can I at least put my nose in the tent? And so it puts its nose in the tent. And then, please can I put my eyes in the tent? And so it puts its eyes in the tent. And bit by bit by bit it moves in until it's come into the whole tent. Thoughts have a way of edging their way into the mind. And at first they seem innocent, but you've got to realize that you've got some more important work here to do than just think thoughts about whatever's going on outside in the world. You've got to train the mind so it stays with where the things you want it to stay with and it doesn't go with the things you don't want it to go with. Set up a good intention and then maintain that intention. And that's how you develop some seclusion inside, even though there may still be some thinking. You're thinking about the breath, something that's right here. There's not a lot of speculation, there's not a lot of doubts or thoughts about this, that, and the other thing that are really uncertain. You can be certain when the breath is coming in, it's coming in. When it's going out, you know it's going out. You can rest with that certainty. And having a place like this does allow you to pull yourself out of your thoughts. So this is how you find mental seclusion. And otherwise we spend our whole days wandering around, as the Buddha said, with craving as a companion. And it whispers all kinds of things into our ears. To the point where we believe whatever it says. But then it gets us to do things that lead to suffering. As the Buddha said, it is the cause of suffering. So you've got to, learn, got to learn how to pull yourself out. And starting out by dividing your thoughts into two sorts like this. This is how you figure out who are your friends that you can take into seclusion with you, who will not bother you or not harass your peace of mind, and everybody else. That's where you train the mind so that it's a good companion. And you can take some peace with you wherever you go.